you're getting to know me. I'm going to talk to you again about gears. More than talking I will show you them and model them using the parametric software Fusion 360. Last time I was talking about helical gears. This time it will be about screw gears, and worm gears. The first 10 minutes of this presentation are devoted to modeling two screw gear wheels from scratch. I will thus draw the tooth profiles in sketches. These profiles will then be extruded to give body to the gear. We have already done this exercise together, I am doing it again exhaustively. As a reminder, the contact flank of a gear tooth is the beginning of the curve of a circular involute. The sketches will be completely constrained. All dimensions will be parameterized. In the description of this presentation you will find a link giving you access to the list of parameters. You will also find a link to a website that popularizes the gear theory as a whole quite well. The starting values used for the parameters of our screw gear are taken from table 7-1 of this website. I let the modeling unfold progressively while you watch. I'm not going to comment on it in detail, you can refer to the previous presentations. There are, however, a few small differences. In the past, I used to draw the tooth profiles directly in the right position for perfect meshing from the extrusions on. Here I draw the tooth profiles along the vertical axis. Only after the extrusions I will move the resulting bodies into the correct position for perfect meshing. This will allow me to simplify the sketches. Of course, you can always ask questions. I will answer them the best I can. The wheels of a screw gear are actually identical to those of a helical gear. There is a priori no mechanical difference. In order for a helical gear to mesh, the helix angles must be opposite but of the same absolute value. The sum of the helix angles is zero and the axes of the wheels are parallel. The pressure angles and the modules must be the same, in the radial system or in the normal system. In order for a screw gear to mesh, it is enough for the pressure angles and modules to be identical. The helix angles are free for each of the wheels, but if they differ the module and pressure angle must be considered in the normal system. In practice, the helix angles will be chosen according to the desired skew angle of the axis of the wheels. The sum of the helix angles is the skew angle. Whereas with a helical gear we will be using a helix angle not exceeding 30 degrees, with a screw gear we could work with a helix angle approaching 90 degrees. With such values we can see that the interest of screw gears is to be able to place transmission axes perpendicularly. This can be achieved, for example, with one gear having a helix angle of 10 degrees and the other having a helix angle of 80 degrees. With such an extreme angle, we speak of a worm gear. In addition, and as surprising as it may seem, this extreme case allows the number of teeth to be reduced to the point where only one can be chosen if desired. A worm gear is one of the simplest and most compact ways to achieve a highly reduced transmission. Regardless of the helix angle, pressure angle, or tooth number selected, the mathematical concept behind cylindrical gears with an involute profile is the same. All cylindrical gear types can be achieved with a single design. All we have to do is to adjust the parameter values. More generally, we can consider that a screw gear is the generic gear from which all other cylindrical gears can be derived. A worm gear cylinder is a screw gear wheel with a helix angle reaching extreme values close to 90 degrees. A helical gear is a screw gear with a helix angle often between 10 degrees and 30 degrees. A spur gear is a screw gear with a null helix angle. The second part of this presentation will consist in progressively adjusting the parameters of our modeling, and only the parameters, 
in order to obtain a worm gear. But I talk and talk, and meanwhile the first screw gear wheel is completed, and the second one is already well underway. With sometimes some small mistakes that I correct as I go along. Knowing your insight, I know you'll point them all out. Be patient, here comes one. There, now. The dimension of this line segment is incorrect. It's not the value that is incorrect, it's the positioning of the marker that is incorrect. Fusion 360 has positioned the marker horizontally when it should be aligned with the segment. The error is subtle because the segment is very close to the horizontal. Here's a bad manipulation, I've placed two line segments on top of each other. I will remove one of them in a few moments. Here, you see, I'm hesitating to size this line segment. I decide to take care of it later. Now I remove the extra segment and dimension the remaining one. The next bad manipulation is in about 30 seconds, when the second spline is drawn. Pay attention. Here we are, I clicked where I shouldn't have, the spline is interrupted. I'll correct it in a few seconds. There it is, we can see that a joining curve is missing between two points. I replace the two splines by a new one that covers all the points. We are ending the design of the second screw gear wheel. It is completed. We still have to position correctly the two gear wheels for a perfect meshing. Each gear wheel will be moved along its axis for a length equivalent to half its thickness. Then they are rotated to position their teeth for perfect meshing. Here we are, it's done. 
we have designed a screw gear consisting of two right hand wheels. Now we will modify the parameters by step values until we obtain a worm gear. We will have confirmation of the hypothesis made earlier that a worm gear is a screw gear whose helix angle values are extreme, close to 90 degrees for the wheel with a small tooth number, and close to 0 degrees for the other. Let's go. We start with a quick look at the parameters. They are elegant, with nice names and expressions, don't you think? So we remove the imposed values of the profile shift coefficients. We control them now, and their influence on the center distance. We change the helix angle of the small gear wheel from 20 to 35 degrees. We change its tooth number from 15 to 12. We change the helix angle of the bigger gear wheel from 30 to 45 degrees. We change its tooth number from 24 to 29. The remodeling at each modification is going well. Let's change again the tooth number of the first gear wheel from 12 to 8. It is now opinion. Let's take a look at the result. The skew angle is 80 degrees, which is the sum of 35 plus 45. This is almost a right angle. Let's look at the detail near the mesh from some viewpoints. There is nothing to complain about, it is perfect. We return to change some parameter values, again the helix angles. Let's be crazy, 60 degrees for the 8 teeth pinion. Its diameter grows significantly, it is expected. In the normal system, the helix angle of helical gears strongly impacts their diameter. We have reduced again the pinion tooth number, from 8 to 5. And again changed its helix angle, to 70 degrees. The axes are now perpendicular. Reducing the pinion tooth number from 5 to 3. The pinion has become thinner as a result of the various changes, let's modify the expression in the corresponding parameter to give it back some thickness. We also need to correct the expression of the twist angle parameter of the sweep feature. The pinion becomes a worm. Our goal is beginning to be reached. We reduce again its tooth number to 2. Let's change one last time the helix angles. 10 degrees for the wheel. And 80 degrees for the worm. The meshing is still perfect. Let's lengthen the worm again. Nice. Quite nice, very nice. Bim bum bam. Let's go for one last change, a single tooth for the worm. In this case, we no longer speak about teeth, but about threads. A few minutes ago we modeled a 15 tooth worm gear, and through the magic of parameters we transformed it into a single threaded worm. Have I ever told you how much fun it is to work with parametric software?